Hello everybody, this is going to be a quick video that describes the all or nothing loss to you. So let's just get into it. Uh, first of all, um, you should all be coming familiar with the lock interface. Uh, from the previous studio, we used the lock method. Um, and honestly, this is really your bread and butter. If you want, I mean, it's called the lock interface. It's, this is the method lock. It acquires a lock. Uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, with lock, except that it can possibly deadlock if you do, don't do the ordering correctly. Um, so in the last one, we did lock ordering to prevent deadlock. This time we're going to do um, sort of something called try lock. So there's a second method on, um, as along with unlock and a few things that do interruptibly. There's a second <clears throat> interesting method, which is try lock, which acquires the lock <clears throat> only if it is free at the time of invocation. And like this one uh, returns void because it acquires the lock period and it will wait as long as it takes to acquire it. Um, this one returns if it's not available and tells you whether or not it got it or not. So that's going to be useful for us um, to uh, uh, learn how to build some things that uh, give you some really the nice properties of X10 without actually having X10. Okay, so a typical use for this is imagine creating a lock up here. Um, if I, you would try to lock it, depending on how it worked, if it worked, go ahead and do whatever it is that you wanted to do with a lock, and then unlock it. And you know that I have this try finally in case this throws an exception or somehow you returned in here uh, instead of if do something was instead of return. Now uh, you always want to unlock it. And the idea is the, uh, by doing try lock, you can do something else if, it's a, um, if the lock is available. So you might have some optional work that you can do um, while you're waiting for the lock rather than sitting there and stalling your thread. Um, you can also go back and try again. Um, and there's a number of things we'll talk about. Okay, um, the differences between them um, is if the lock is not held by another thread, so if no one else is holding this resource that you're trying to acquire, uh, they act pretty much the same. They both acquire it and return. Um, this one returns true, this one just returns. Um, if the lock is held by another thread, the straight up bread and butter lock method will block It'll, uh, your current continuation will stop um, until the lock can be acquired. Try lock just says, I uh, didn't get it, and immediately returns false. And that lets you decide what to do. Okay, um, and today we're gonna, like I've been uh, alluding to, build the all or nothing lock studio. Um, and again, the motivation for this and the previous studio is to build some of that sweet, isolated deadlock freedom when you don't have X10. You can do this in any language you want. It's got a lock, which is pretty much all of them. Um, the other thing is another sort of call to action is don't accept your flawed tools, um, build better ones. I myself, when, you know, learned about synchronized and how it could do deadlock, I was like, well, I guess I'll just be careful. Um, don't, accept, don't do that. Uh, build yourself some utilities that can uh, make it so that you don't have to worry about deadlock. Um, <clears throat> in the first example, we have this uh, first part of the studio, we have this account with lock interface, um, and it has the ability to get the lock that's associated with this account. Um, and so we're gonna do, again, the bank account transferring money. In this case, it's gonna uh, attempt to transfer the money. So it's gonna, you're gonna write a method try to transfer money. And again, there'll be sender and recipient and some amount. Um, and you should attempt to transfer the money. We're gonna use try lock. Uh, just like in the previous studio, we're going to use this transfer result check balance and transfer. Um, if you're unable to require the lock, let the person who called you know by saying unable to attempt at this time. Um, and this doesn't suffer from deadlock because you'll never hold, uh, for example, you'll never hold the sender's lock and be waiting on the recipient. You'll just try them both and um, if you don't get it, no problem. We'll try, you know, like let the person who tried to transfer the money know about it. They'll probably try again in a little bit, um, but you're not gonna hold one lock while you're waiting on another, so we can have a second. Um, after you're done with that, there's gonna be a nice, so that's sort of a, just a very specific imp, uh, implementation of try lock. Um, this is gonna be a nice little utility. Imagine if somebody passes you a list of locks, try to lock them all, so you could say, uh, start to build some of the isolated uh, uh, utilities, things like that, where you're like, I have a whole bunch of locks, I need them all, all or nothing. Like, uh, lock them all, 
and tell me you've got it, return true, and like acquire them and hold them, or try to lock as many as you can. If as soon as one of them fails, return me back to the previous state um, and return false, just so I know you didn't do it, so maybe I can try again. So let's uh, talk about what this should look like. Um, if somebody calls lock all for five locks and none of them are held by any other threads, um, then you just roll through, lock them all, and return true. Okay. If, for example, you're trying to get these five locks and thread B holds like this lock right here, what you'll do is you'll roll through, get those two locks, try that one, try lock the return false, you're like, all right, all right, never mind. You'll back up one, we'll talk about that in a second, and then unlock the next, the two that you locked, because we need to return it in the state that we started. Um, every list has both an iterator, which you're probably familiar with, and a list iterator. It's like an iterator, except it allows you to go in both directions. So let's talk about this really quickly. List iterator extends iterator, all, and in addition to having has next and next, it also has has previous and previous. So this allows us to go in both directions. Um, my quick question for everybody is, imagine the list, list A, B, C, D, and E. You make an iterator for it, I call next, I print out next, 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 right? Then I print previous, previous. And the question for everyone is, does it print A, B, C, B, A, or does it print A, B, C, C, B? And we know it's gonna print out A, B, and C, but what are the previous return here? And everyone just come up with what you think that's gonna do, and then we'll talk about the exact answer. Okay, we're back. Um, so the answer is this. I'm not gonna try to convince you, or, or I think it, it makes sense because um, of the way iterators are built. Um, next sort of advances it to the next uh, thing. Um, and so this next, as well as returning C, gets it ready to return D. So the previous pops back to C. Um, if you thought it was the, gonna be this one, that's totally fine, right? Um, there's, you know, that's a perfectly reasonable expectation. Um, it doesn't really matter because this is how it works. Um, and it does make some sense uh, why, you might think it's like crazy that previous does this, but the way iterator's uh, state is sort of kept, it's like, I'm, it's, when you call next, it returns C and gets re ready to return D. And the previous says, oh, go back here. Um, it also happens to return C again. So this is an implication right here. After we've, called next as we're iterating through this list, right? Um, we just tried to acquire this, it failed. So the next previous would return this, this lock again, right? So we have to do this one rollback first before rolling through all the previous ones to undo and return ourselves to this safe state. So make sure you do that. Um, lastly, there's gonna be this kitchen lock utils app. It's always, uh, I feel like it's nice to, when you build some utility, let's use it. So in this case, we're gonna um, have a recipe that has a list of required appliances. Each of those appliances has a lock. This is a very uh, reasonable thing of a resource that you'd have to get. I'm gonna have to acquire all the locks for all the appliances. You know, and to do this, I need a stove and a blender and a uh, multi-mixer or whatever. Um, and make sure I can get all of the locks, acquire them all before I create my recipe. And so you're just gonna use this uh, run with all lots or don't run at all method that you just wrote uh, to build this little application. Um, and with that, I would say uh, dig into the studio. Uh, like I said, we're going to build this one in the previous studio, build some of the um, nice features of X10 when you don't have access to it. You can build it in anything. Uh, this will is a second way to um, provide yourself deadlock freedom. And uh, just in general, always don't accept your flawed tools, build better ones. Um, dig into the studio and good luck and have fun.